welcome to Select Arcane. It's the new year, and because it's January, I'm really busy with Namo Pamo, but I thought I'd throw it in a little bit of a tidbit, or as Canadians call them, Timbits, to satisfy anyone watching this channel. I'll be doing something different this episode. I'll be continuing a series I started in 2018 of my full crop. These are tiny oil paintings of every foal I've ever had. And in 2018, I had my first four foals, who I'll introduce, and I'll tell you how they turned out as racehorses. I'm a few years behind, but let's get started. The first foal I had at my farm was Ichiban, which means number one in Japanese. He was really cute, his mom was Kiss, but unfortunately he passed away at three months old from pneumonia. The second foal was Taiga. Her mother was Gossip Mill. She was shy and precocious. She ended up winning one race down in the States. I don't own her anymore, but from what I gather, she's actually making a bit of money while she's still running. The third foal I had was Salem. She was the first foal out of her mom, Ellie, and she ended up hurting herself when she was young, but did end up placing as a racehorse in Canada. I think she's retired now. And finally, the fourth foal of 2018 was Lita. She was the first kid out of her mom, Flax, and Though she didn't end up being a very good racehorse, she came second in Canada, and then she retired to stay with us. She still lives in my backyard, and I hope to post more about her soon. In fact, I even have a little model I painted of her on an Ultramax resin by Maggie Bennett. Here's the graduating class of 2018, Tyga, Salem, and Lita. So moving over to 2019, let's start with number one or I guess number five. This is Yuki. She was the second foal out of her mom Kiss, so that means half sister to Ichiban. I ended up selling her very young and she ended up going to a sales home, meaning that somebody was going to buy her and sell her. She didn't race, but I think she's going to be a mom. The way I start my sketches is with a brief pencil outline. I just rough out the shapes, like kind of block them up into basic shapes like circles and triangles and squares, just trying to get the basic silhouette down. It's not pretty, it's very messy, but all of this is going to be covered. I'm following paint. my reference as closely as I can and I'm just trying to outline the basics and block out the shapes. It's very hard to do with just paint alone, that's why I'm going in with the pencil layer first. I don't use my eraser at all, it, except for this one specific part where my proportions went way out the window, but otherwise I'm just trying to sketch it out, get a feel for it. And now that I have my basic sketch and my basic outline of what my plan is, I go in with my paint. So I'm using oil paints, specifically Windsor and Newton brand. I'm using tin foil as my palette and I do not have any water with me, I only have a piece of paper towel. I'm dipping my brush in the paint and I'm actually blending the paint on the canvas itself. I am not mixing colors on the palette. Why am I doing this? Well, I mean, there's no real wrong way to paint oils or acrylics, it's just my preference for this specific painting. Here you can kind of see me waffling back and forth between what I like. So I apply the paint on the horse. I'm not really blending it, I'm just kind of putting in batches of color like you would for a paint by number. The goal here is not really to have an established painting. What I'm doing is I'm putting lighter and darker areas and I'm kind of flushing those places out. I'm just building up the shape of Yuki. I'm not uh, going for a finished piece. It's really ugly. You have to trust the process on this. So you'll see that on the left there's shading, on the right it's more light because the sun is hitting her, so I'm trying to add in my colors according to what my reference shows. When I'm somewhat satisfied, I use a much fluffier brush to just gently dab it. The brush is completely dry and I'm just dabbing the canvas, uh, lifting up the extra paint because if you are familiar with oil paints, you'll know that the more oil paint on the canvas, the longer the drying time. 
already this painting is probably going to take about 24 hours to dry. I'm not rubbing in the fluffy brush onto the canvas, I'm just dabbing it lightly, pulling up the extra paint, and I kind of see what I'm left with. Oh, I don't like it, so I'm kind of going back in with the dotting, uh, and I'm waffling back and forth with what I like and what I dislike. I do the exact same thing with her blanket. So Yuki wore a little neon orange blanket exactly like her half-brother Ichiban. So I'm going in with this absolutely fabulous cadmium orange. It's really neon and it kind of blows out on camera a little bit, but it's very, very bright. It's great. And again, I'm using a different fluffy brush to just dab away the extra paint. And if you're curious about the colors I'm using for her coat, because she's a little bit on the red side, uh, here, here's the list of colors I'm using for this particular painting. When I get stuck on a certain area, I actually move over to something else. That's why I actually blocked out the orange of the coat, but as you can see, I'm still fiddling with the neck and head color. That's because it's important to kind of keep a fresh perspective of what you're working on. By moving on to something else, it kind of gives your mind and eyes a break. And then when you come back, you can see all the issues that you thought you saw, but you weren't sure what they were. The tiny pink brush that I'm using, by the way, is a nail art brush and it's absolutely fabulous for the tiny details on this tiny painting. So here we are in the final stretch and ooh, she's a bit messy, isn't she? She's a bit fluffy on the outside of her body but it's okay there's a reason for this because we're going to be blocking in all of that background color in all of the 2018 full crop paintings I did one solid block of color so here I'm using this really cool magenta color and I'm applying it onto the background but wait a second uh, okay, why is there acrylic paint in my oil box and this is an acrylic paint? Oh dear. Um, so if you don't know, you should never mix oils and acrylic paint because if you do, they'll become this chewing gum type consistency and your painting won't cure. It just will not cure. It'll just destroy everything. So luckily I've just put the magenta on the outside and I haven't touched any of the oil paint so it's okay we can salvage this it's fine acrylics dry within minutes so as soon as it's dry I go in with a different oil paint and I don't have anything similar I do not have magenta so I'm using alizarin crimson and kind of working my way through with some whites and yellows and trying to get it as close as I can so I have this rose color and I'm kind of just making this little pink ombre. Okay, we'll just go with that. Oops, some of the acrylics wiped off. It's, it's okay, we can fix this. And Yuki is done. She took me six minutes to sketch and one hour and 15 minutes to paint. She's gonna dry on the side for 24 hours. And in the meantime, let's get started on the next guy. The sixth fool born on our farm is Alex. He's the second child out of Flax, meaning that he's the half-brother to Lita. He was very shy and would always hide in the corner and didn't really want to be touched very much. And I ended up selling him, and he ended up being a very nice racehorse. He's still making his living on the tracks in Canada. So the exact same deal with Yuki. I'm blocking out the basic shapes, circles, squares, triangles, and just kind of eyeballing where I want my lines. 
it's not pretty, it's going to be covered up anyways, as we already went over. So quick, quick, in five minutes, this sketch is done. Just like with Yuki, I'm laying down the base color, a lot of raw umber and a lot of burnt sienna. I'm blocking in the lights and darks of his coat and pushing and pulling the values until they're what I want. I found that Alex wasn't as difficult as Yuki and maybe that's just because there's a lot less surface area to paint and a lot less details that I have to do. but I always find that doing the big white markings after doing the base layer is always a challenge. The whites always seem to get dirty and muddled with the base colors. So that's something I'll have to work on in the future. Alex is wearing the same coat as Salem was, so I have to do this blue plaid all over again. And I don't know, I think four years later, my blanket skills are slightly better. What do you think? An hour and 15 minutes later and Alex is done. And finally, the last foal who was born in 2019 was Haku, like the river spirit from Spirited Away. He is out of Ellie, so he is the half-brother to Salem, and he ended up being the most successful racehorse we've ever bred. So one more time, I'm blocking out the rough shaped circles and squares and triangles and just flushing out the basic outline of Haku. In this case, he's kind of more in a pretzel shape, so he's a lot more complicated with a lot more longer lines and a lot more details. I had to go back and forth a lot on his sketch because I was kind of confused on where legs are and where his head is and where his blanket goes and where everything gets covered up. So he was definitely the most challenging one of this grouping. Which fits because in real life he was always difficult to deal with, with biting and kicking and pushing and thinking he was the boss of everyone. So I think that's kind of fitting. I actually painted Yuki and Alex on the same day and then the next day I painted Haku because my wrist got so cramped. And I'm not sure if it's because I took that little break or if it's because my wrist still hurt, but it was a lot more difficult to flush out Haku's color. I think it might have been the lighting in my reference photo or something, but I, I found it quite difficult. And I started shading his butt before I started, you know, filling in his blanket, so things got a little weird. But I think I pulled it together in the end. I actually didn't use my soft brush as much, and I'm not sure why, but I thought that it would be a lot easier to do everything with the smaller brush. And even though Haku actually was most difficult, he only took 56 minutes to complete, and I'm not sure why. The difficulties continued when he actually kept falling off his drying rack, but he was not injured, so I don't know, I think Haku's just coming back to haunt me. So wow, we finished three oil paintings in the span of two days, so I've already laid out all the timelines, but um, it's quite a few hours. 
this video was actually supposed to be like a small tidbit of, you know, just kind of filling in the space of the month because I'm kind of busy with Namo Pamo, and instead this took on a whole journey of its own. And I really was going to do the rest of my full crop, but obviously this is going to have to be a small series because I value your time. So here we are, here's the full full crop all together, and next time we'll be working on 2020. If you enjoyed this video or want to see more like it, please like and subscribe. You know where to find me, Facebook, Instagram, at Select Arcane. And I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.